What's going on, YouTubers? Um, it's Saturday again. Excited to be here, to be honest. It's almost 5 o'clock. And uh, I'm still having the same problem with the truck. It's not <clears throat> run. Hold on a second. Let me back this up. It runs good now, but uh, it didn't run good. I've been fighting this problem for about, uh, I would say, three months or so or more, and I'm, um, it got overhauled and ran tremendously good in March, for about three, four months, and then started acting up a little bit. Well, that was fuel filters. That has something with fuel pressure, so I replaced a bunch of parts, a bunch of wire harnesses, um, ran overhead numerous times, checked all the grounds, new fuel lines. I mean, uh, this thing, I literally replaced everything on it, everything. So the symptoms are, maybe some people have the same motor and have the same problem. Maybe this video will help you out a little bit. Um, by all means, not guaranteed, but I have a feeling that's what it causes a problem of mine, and I think I solved it. So last night, I was laying down, going through the internet like crazy and trying to figure out what else can be replaced, what causes this symptom. And I found on one forum, damn me, I forgot the name of that forum, but <clears throat> uh, there's a guy who was describing same symptoms as mine. Run, the, the truck idles fine, runs fine down the road, but it feels like it's locking on fuel, but still gets plenty of boost pressure, which explains to me why this, this C15 cat, it's my personal opinion, they can make uh, quite a bit of boost with very little fuel. That's how they were cleaning the uh, emissions on it. So I ask myself a question, what is, what's controlling the timing? Because if you think about it, <clears throat> uh, we have, uh, let's say, zero altitude, right? At the sea level, like you be in Florida, you're gonna be two feet above the sea level. If you be in Colorado, up in the mountains, sometimes you high as a 10, 12, 15,000 feet, I believe so. So something's gotta be fine tuned this. That's what this guy is do, does. Atmospheric pressure, biometrical pressure, map, map sensor, they call it. Call it a different way. Caterpillar calls atmospheric pressure. This little guy measures the, um, me basically measures it and tells the ECM in which altitude you're located at. Why is this so important? Uh, if you're at the sea level, you have very good oxygen. Um, the, the pressure of altitude, which is atmospheric pressure, is, it's a lot more richer and pressurized a little bit more than up in the higher elevations. So if you're at the sea level, your motor basically, let's say for the example, will release 99% of a fuel at the full throttle, uh, at the full pedal. If you would be at the Colorado, for the example, at the 10,000 feet, and you'd be at the full throttle, you're only gonna release probably 65, 55% of the fuel. The reason they do that, that's all my own conclusion. The reason they do that because the air is different. So you want to get the fuel and air ratio mi mixed right, and they do with this thing. So this thing literally controls your timing and your fuel. The uh, reason they do that on electronic engines for the fuel efficiency, and the engine protects itself. If you're going to be on a high altitude, and you would dump same amount of fuel you would dump in Florida, at the two feet elevation, you would have melted freaking piston. Well, you wouldn't, but those things would see nothing but black smoke. I mean, it would just be clouds of smoke in the back. <clears throat> and this is the only one thing I didn't really change and it didn't check and it never came to my mind until today. I went in and bought this damn thing, it's $150. So, the location of this sensor, it's right next where the oil pressure sensor is, in the, in the, basically in the same housing. It, this is driver's side, your fuel filters, your air compressor, 
that's right there. But this is MXX C15 Caterpillar 2007. I think on the BSX on they're in the same spot. I don't know about the 6NZ, 34, 6E, 5 EKs, 2 WS. I don't know what they're located, but I'm sure you guys got to have one too. Anytime it has an ECM, it will have that sensor. But it could, like I said, it could be called different ways. Uh, Detroit has theirs in a basically on the intake manifold. It's, uh, I believe it's this one but this is 14 liter Detroit. But <clears throat> anyways, we're gonna make a video about the cat. So I put it in, uh, let me back this up. If you end up buying this sensor, it comes without O-ring. I didn't buy a new O-ring because mine is actually really good shape. It's not dry rod and it's soft. And uh, the O-ring needs to be bought separately and it's $6 for it. Yeah, it's a Caterpillar. You buying a hundred fifty dollar damn sensor, it can't give you damn O-ring. Can you believe that? So, anyways, uh, I put it in, took it for test drive, and it blew my mind away. This thing actually made a tremendous amount of difference. Uh, I'm not going to throw this guy away. I'm going to go to a friend of mine who has ET software for Caterpillars, and we're going to start the truck check my new sensor what it's reading and we're gonna check what this one's reading but I still the guy next Saturday we're gonna fine-tune the ECM basically I still can advance or retard the timing whatever needs to be he's kind of good at it and uh, we will we will know uh, when he plugs it in we will know what where the timing set at I don't know exactly. I, I don't know exactly how they do it, but I'm really surprised. This little freaking booger made a huge difference. So check this before you do anything else. If you have a similar problem, thanks for watching.